so uh, the next session will be taken by uh, mr joseph and he is senior director technology at rocket mortgage and microsoft mvp so can we just give a big round of applause for him thank you i'm sure you ladies and gentlemen are tired of clapping already so no more clapping just throw money at me and that's totally fine my contact information is up there. There's really going to be no slides. If you have any questions about this show, feel free to shoot me an email afterwards. This little tidbit right here is my website where you'll find the uh, PowerPoint if you need and or links to any of the code samples that are on here. That being said, our agenda is just to scale an application. So goodbye, PowerPoint. We're going to spend most of the time in Visual Studio and um, Azure Portal. So hopefully the screen resolution is okay for everything but that page. For some reason, I shrunk it down. Can you see that in the back? Yes, no. If not, you can move all the way up front. There's plenty of seats here. Okay, so let's see what this app. I'm going to take a sample application that is available on the on GitHub. It's basically it's called the eShop Web, and uh, a lot of presenters use it because it's kind of sort of a well-designed application. It has Docker endpoints as well as an API and front end. So now I'm going to take this and kind of move it to the web, and we'll do it in bits and pieces so you can see. So there's two parts to this application, the web API, which I think I need to start. Let's just hit play and see what happens. Give you a quick walk through the app so you can see as we start moving out bits and pieces of it, what happens and I get a giant red bottom. Let's see, of course it fails the second you run it on, on stage. Ah, there it goes. So this is a simple e-commerce site, not real, it's all fake. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and move it from working on my machine into working on the cloud and then you'll all be able to play around with it and fake order stuff. We're gonna, there's a SQL Server backend database to this that we're gonna take and we're gonna shift in the cloud. Uh, a little note, I cheated earlier and I moved it to the cloud because the database part takes a good five to 10 minutes and I didn't want to all sit here, stare at my pretty face while the little squirrely thing was going, duh, duh, duh. So I uploaded it ahead of time, but we're gonna upload the apps and everything else. And then we're gonna take the images and move them off to a CDN, a content delivery network, so that the whole site is scalable at the click of a button. So let's go with the first step. Dun, 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 dun and the Azure portal. So the first thing we typically do when I do with any app is create a resource. And let me zoom in on this a little bit. Ba, 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 ba. If you have any questions throughout, feel free to raise your hand. I'll just ignore you like my wife ignores me. <laughs> but seriously, if there are any questions, raise your hand and I'll call you when there's, when there's a break. Uh, so the first thing I typically do is go to resource group and I look to create a resource group. Now what a resource group is, is kind of a logical grouping of Azure services. And the reason why I do that is because it's easy to turn on and off things on a group or like when I'm presenting, when I get back upstairs, I'll hit delete group and everything inside the resource group will be deleted. So you click here, create resource group, and then select your Azure subscription. I'm gonna be using my Microsoft Azure sponsorship, which means it doesn't cost me any money. And then give it a name, I can call it C Sharp Corner. And then give it a region that it's gonna run in. And then click review and create. And if the validation passes, I click create. I've already created one, so we're gonna use that one only because the, uh, again, because of the database. But I'm gonna show you how to create the database to make it a little bit easier. 
So you go to create resource. Yes, I want to leave that. And then there's a whole list of things. You can search here. What ends up happening is uh, Azure gets smart and kind of puts everything that you use regularly. So you can see I use SQL databases, Key Vaults, Web Apps on a quite regular basis. So they're up there. You can also do it by categories here. So if I chose databases, I get a long list of databases that I can choose from. So here I am going to create a SQL database only to make it easier. SQL database is the cloud equivalent of, uh, of SQL Server. Azure SQL is a slightly modified version of it. The camera guy must be going crazy because I keep walking and he's like this, trying to catch me. So same thing like we do, what, where do you want to create it? I created a resource group called Scale It for this. You give it a database name. Let's say I call it Scale It, C Sharp Corner. Where do I want the server to exist? The server should be near where your users are. In this particular case, it doesn't matter as much because you're all my users and it's right here and I'm going to be deleting it in about an hour anyway. But this you want to try to keep it centralized. And as I start talking later, we'll show, talk about content delivery networks and things like that to make it a little bit easier for you. So this decision doesn't matter as much. Choose the workload, whether you want production or development. Since we're developing the code live, I am going to put it in development. And as you see, it kind of changes the type of server. Obviously, if you were building a real app, and you're pushing it live, like I am now, you would want to choose production. But for our case, it really doesn't matter since the app is going to be deleted. When you click configure database, you get a lot of choices. This is actually a lot simplified list. There's basically two different types. A provisioned, which is an actual set of servers. They basically create VMs for you in the cloud. And you get billed by the hour. I think the cheapest one is like $45 an hour, Amer uh, US. And then the serverless, you're billed based on the usage. So how many seconds that SQL server is used, whether it's a query, reading, writing, or saving. If you're building a site for yourself that's not going to be used a lot, uh, serverless is probably the way to go. It'll be a lot cheaper. Then when you go in there, there is a hardware configuration. Choose the hardware configuration you want. There's a whole list of them. If you go to uh, learn.azure.microsoft.com, I believe you can see a whole list. These are the recommended, but if you go into any one of them, you can drill into them. Each of them has a cost with them. I'm going to go with the basic for right now because that's the easiest to create. Here it's just based on size. So I'll tell you here, it's going to cost me $5.60 um, a month to use this. So I use this for like my blog and a couple other things that don't get hit on a regular basis. Click apply. And then it's going to uh, show you how you want or ask you how you want to be backed up. Three options for backup, local, zone, and geo. Locally is only within that data center. Zone is within that zone. So in this case, um, Asia, India. So we'll find a server somewhere there. And then geo redundant will put a backup locally within your region and another region. So something like here and the US. So for this demo, just do that only because it's quicker. <laughs> only because it's quicker to create. I'm going to click create, and then we should be good to, to go. And we're not going to use this anyway. I just wanted to show you how to create it. While that's going, I created one already, so let's go to my home and see it. Ah, come on. 
Let's go to my home and see it. So here you see I have the resource group Skelet as well as the uh, SQL Server Skelet. Within here, I have the ability to do a couple of different things. Uh, I can create a database, create a new elastic pool, import a database, reset the password, etc. cetera. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. If I had a different database, let's say, for this particular example, there's two databases. There's one for the catalog and one for the identity. Again, they're already created, but I want to walk you through it. So you give it a database name, C Sharp DB. Whether or not you want to use Elastic Pool, Elastic Pool basically will stretch your server or shrink your server based on usage. You'll see I get a lot of the same things that I had before, and I can create apply, which I'm not going to do because I already have one. So now that I have the database here, let's go see how I can use it. I'm going to zoom out of the screen a little bit to show you some more here. So if I click here, I'll see I have three databases registered. The scale at C-sharp corner that I just created and the catalog DB. Right, let's go to the catalog DB for a second. Then you get most database-like things here. So I have the ability to copy the database, restore it, export, set server, firewall, delete, and connect with. This is the server name I'm going to connect with, so I need to copy this to our app configuration file to make sure things are working. Before I do that, a little tip. When you're working in Azure Portal and you're working in SQL Server, by default, it's blocked off. No one can have access to it. It's basically a hidden database, so you have to expose it to something. You have to expose it to two different things, a client IP address, which is you know the local machine here, and or a uh, internal list of Azure servers. So to do that, you click on the set firewall and you get a networking page, which says, how do you want to do this? I'm going to choose selective network so that I have the ability to work on it from this desktop. But if any one of you get a copy of the um, Server name, user ID, and password, you won't be able to access it because you're not on the same IP as me. So you click on that, and then this add client IP address. As you can see, I ran it a couple of times. I ran it, uh, this is in the hotel room, not on the VPN. This is the hotel room on the VPN just to test it out. So if I click there, I just added this IP address to it. Then there's a little button here that says, allow Azure services and resources to access this server. So we're gonna do that in a little bit because we're gonna host uh, the ASP.NET core site on here. We want that to have the ability to get to it. So I click save, the firewall rules are updated. Now let's double check that I can get to it in uh, Visual Studio. So let's go back to Visual Studio, who's hidden somewhere. Where'd you go, Visual Studio? There you are. So here it wants to know the security credentials. So I'm going to copy the security credentials because I don't want to have to type them all. So let's copy out this section here and let's paste it here. And then I have to change the server names because this was the demo a while ago. So I go back here and then where'd you go? Overview. Oh, I got to go to SQL databases. Catalog. And I think it was just scale it, right? Yeah, scale it. So let's come back to scale it. And then I think the user ID password is correct. So now I'm gonna restart the app and it should be connected directly to the SQL database. 
fingers crossed that it works. If not, I'll look like a complete idiot up here and you all make fun of me and start throwing stuff. But we all know you're here for this anyway, right? Now this is gonna take a little bit longer to load because now it's actually going out and making the connection to the server. While that's going, let's connect to the database so we can see that we have a valid connection to the database. So we're gonna go view, SQL Server Object Explorer, and then I am going to add an Azure database. Ah. I'm running in preview and preview is not a full version so it doesn't have this on here. So I am going to just have to use a different tool just to make sure we're actually connected to the database. Let's see if the website loaded yet. Oh, it's actually localhost. It didn't even run yet. Do, 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 do. Could not. I have the database name wrong? Uh, oh no, I, that, I was not using that one. That was just a make-believe one, but thank you. Uh, where'd you go? Next page. Ah, it's scale dash it, so that's why. Scale dash it, scale dash it, save. Run it. Wait a couple of seconds. Let's type in the the address. Live demos when you're using Azure on hotel Wi-Fi are always scary, which is why I tend to create a lot of this stuff ahead of time. Where was that other one that showed it? Nope, not that. It's taken forever. Let's pause it and see where it's at. Oh, it's actually trying to do a database migration. We're gonna copy, we're gonna comment that out now. What's happening, because this is the example, it wants to actually create a copy of the database. So that's probably why it's failing. Come on. Let's pause it and see where it's at. It's just running. Continue. This is really slow. Let's make sure the database is up and running. So this was the database. And we can see that there is a bunch of tables. Let's go here and see the catalog to make sure it's connected. Edit data. It's usually not this slow, but while that's going, since it's very slow, let's go and kind of migrate the data there. Can't tell why it's broken. It's hard to always see that when it's when you're live on stage. Let's do let's do it the old way. I'm gonna pin you to the screen and we're gonna run you first. Start new instance. Make sure the API runs. And then we are going to start the web. Let's 
Set should be one. Where'd the other one go? Okay, so the API is working. We're able to go and see it. Let's try it out. Yep, so it connects to the database. We're good. Let's do the next step. It's just taken an awfully long time for it to, to go through. So the next step we're going to do is uh, publish this. So in order for us to publish it, we want to go through and create a web app. So we're going to go and create resource and then look for a look for a web app. Now this normally needs a application service to go on. Yes, I know that failed. So let's assign this to the resource. We're going to give it a name. Let's call it eShop dash scale it dash web. Oop. And then you have the option to publish it via code, Docker, or a static web app. We're going to do code right now. And this is in .NET 6. And then what region? I think we chose Central India. And then what plan? By default, it's going to create a plan for you, or you can create a new one. I'm just going to use this name for the sake of time. And this CPU, click review and create. Click create. So now we created the web app portion of it. This will host the, the website. Now we need to host the actual uh, API part. Now this is going to take a minute because that's the deploy a VM and everything. Well, actually, while we're, while we're waiting for that, let's do the next part. We're going to go and work on the CDN. So in order to work with the CDN, we're going to create a blob storage to store all of our images. So let's just do, or not blog, blob. This will allow us to put all the images in a container that we can then put a CDN in front of it. So let's go here and create a storage account. And again, the subscription, what resource group. Then it's going to want a name. So let's, I typically do CDN images. And then the region. Now this name has to be unique to the region. Uh, where we do central, there we go, central India. E shop. Oh, I forget you can't use You can't use uh, dashes in the name. That looks good. It's not complaining. You have the option of the performance, standard or premium. For most cases, standard is there unless you have a, a super high redundant site. We're going to choose locally redundant storage, which is what we talked about for the database. Again, Depending on the scale of your application, you might want to change that a little bit. Waiting for the final review to finish, then we click create. So what we did is we created a database, we started to create the website for it. Now we're creating a storage facility to 
put to, to uh, place all the images. Now it's passed, I can hit create, and it's going to deploy it. Once it's done creating, This actually goes pretty quick. Once it's done creating, we need to use the Azure Storage Explorer, or I think you can do this straight from within Visual Studio, to connect to it. So what I'm gonna do now is create a container for it, upload all the images to it, then those images will be available to the different sites. So. I go here, I don't know if I can, oh, I can zoom this in. So here's the new CDN we created, CDN Images eShop. I open it up to see, you should have four choices in there. Blobs, files, queues, and tables. If I open up the blob containers, there shouldn't be any there. Let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna create one and let's call it um, images. They see down here it's creating. Now I have the ability to upload images. So let's go back to Visual Studio, find that folder where everything is, and I think it's web images or catalog images. Do, 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 do. Come on, where are you hiding? Oh, there it is, under products. So I'm gonna basically upload this whole directory. So let's open file in File Explorer. And now let's go to the, uh, where'd you go? You're over here. Let's go and upload images. I click upload files, let's go select the files. And I don't remember the path name, so I'm just gonna copy the path, bring it back here, select all them, click open, click upload, and then hopefully the internet is not super slow here and we'll see them all created. It's 35% complete, 91% complete, and done. You see this refreshing, I should have the 12 images in there. So we're good so far. Next step is now that we have those images there, we're going to need to update the permissions of them to again, provide access, because by default, the access is restricted. And where are we? So here we want to go to set public container access. So I'm gonna go to the containers, thank you. Click this, do change access level and we will do uh, anonymous for blob. So what this allows us to do is now access the blob from the URL for it, which is somewhere over here. Da, 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 da. Oh, you can actually just go here and see the Oh, where's the name? Properties. So here I can change this or copy this out and now I'll be able to get to those images. So as image, what, one dot PNG. Now I have the image there. So I can then update the application to change the base URL 
to that those images and we'll pull those images right from there before we go and do that since i only have three minutes left i'll show you the next step which is the cdn portion of it so again we go to home create resource type in cdn by the way if you're watching this part's going to take a minute so for this uh, i'm going to ask you to tweet a picture of whatever you want the screen me use the hashtag c sharp corner comp 22 and uh, put the number 42 in there so i know it's legit and obviously my hashtag or my username which is jay guadagno and then at the end we'll pick first one I see and you'll get this uh, so let's go with there's lots of different CDN so I'm gonna go with manage CDN on Azure oops that's not the right one This one, I think, is under networking. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's under compute. Ah, I can't find it. Let's try content. Oh, there's one tweet. Where'd you go? It's one of the challenges with working with Azure is that things are changing constantly. Delivery. No results found, CDN. There should be two CDNs in here, one for, one for uh, Verizon and one for uh, Alchemy, but for some reason I can't find them. But we're out of time anyway, unfortunately. So let's go to the about page. And here's my contact information if you want. So I already get the demo working. It's one of the side effects of hosting in a, in a uh, hotel space and we actually had a compressed time. This is normally an hour long talk. We had to do it in 30 minutes. Here's my contact information. If any questions on it, I, I'll tweet out later on today. I believe I have a link to all the code, but you can find it on the jjg.me slash about jjg. And in that case, I am done. Thanks for the clapping. Now let's see who we're gonna pick and let, let this open up first. And then I'm just gonna point to the screen. Is it done loading? My eyes are closed, I'm not watching. It's done loading? Nope. <laughs> Let's go, I'm gonna scroll down a bit, and the, this person. Where are you? I'm not gonna throw it. <laughs> yeah, any questions since the presenter's not here yet? Go ahead. Yes, you can put uh, anything you want in there, even files, what have you, you can put JSON files, anything in, anything that's static that doesn't change, you can throw it in there and then make it available via the CDN. Any other questions? Oh, wait, yeah, I gotta take a picture of the stage too. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, I don't have an opinion on them. You choose what's best for you. As you saw when you created the app service, you can say via code, via container. This actual example, which is available, uh, where'd you go? Which is available right here. So this URL, you can get the code sample and it has a Docker container in there as well as the API. So you can choose whatever works for you. Any other questions? Cool. Well, thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of the event. I'll be here all day. So make sure you avoid me. No, I'm just kidding. And no one's leaving. I guess I can, I'll just stay and hang out. I don't see another presenter. Is there lunch or something right after this? Ah, that's why no one's leaving. They don't want to get lunch. They'd rather hang out and talk to me. That's fine. No other questions? Doesn't have to be about the talk. Or you can just sit here and stare at me and not be awkward at all. I didn't publish it yet to Azure, so that was gonna be the next step. Yep, right afterwards I was gonna publish it to Azure. Yep, so the ultimate, we, we had it on-prem, which was a SQL Server database sitting on my machine. The images were sitting on my machine. We took the data, moved it to Azure, we took the images, put it in CDN to make it available in blob storage. Then the next step was going to be take the website and make it available there. Yep. So the question was, he uses ADO.net to connect. How does how do they all kind of work together? So I will show you in this particular application, where did I put it? Uh, I think it's this window. In this particular application, all of that's controlled right here in the config. So this is the database connection. I changed it from local to Azure. The next step was gonna be here, change it from local to the CDN, and then here, when I publish it live, we were gonna come back and change this from localhost to you know, eshop.azurewebsites.net or whatever domain. At that point, the application looks at the configuration and then loads everything appropriately. Yep, yep. We didn't get to that point. Uh, I can probably show where that is, assuming it's done. Uh, I'll show you another sample, sample site that I have once it loads. So this is what we were going to create. There's an API and a web. If I open up the web, there will be a configuration here. And then that configuration kind of mirrors your, your app settings.json. And it should show a bunch of parameters once this little spinny guy is done. And that's where you go and change everything. If it loads, there it goes. So this is what we would use to change everything over. <laughs>